Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Isn't that great? It's wow, well done. Pat yourselves on the back, congratulate yourselves. I mean, look at straight up. You got that done last week. You got these new speakers in here this week. Uh, I mean, from my uh, perspective, I have to say thank you to you because I was, I, I was really kind of putting a lot of stress on my voice, trying to be heard slow and loud and two services a Sunday. You're one of them later on in life, uh, like Italian guys who's just a hoarse whisper, and I didn't really want to do that for the rest of my life, so I'm grateful. See, I can just talk to you now. This is awesome. Uh, naturally, we're gonna have to make some adjustments, so if you hear something you don't like, complain to, I think, Jim, you're the guy to complain to, right? Right, okay, good. Don't complain to me, because I'll forget. It's not that I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind being complained to, I'll just forget. Uh, Let's see, uh, onward, let's get on with it. Let's see, today is by the cover, Michaelmas. You might have heard that, Michaelmas. Uh, those little uh, white flowers you see in the weeds sometimes in the ditch, those are Michaelmas flowers. They're white with a little uh, yellow thing. It's late September, early October. Uh, it marks a change in seasons. Um, it has been traditionally, it has always been uh, something that the church did in terms of school year, stuff like that, and it kind of corresponds late September, early October. Um, um, it remembers the festival of M Michael and all angels, remembers that the, whatever is going on here with Jesus and us has to do with something that's going on in heaven with Satan and God, right? Uh, and we're part of that. It's a mystery that we don't understand, but we have like a little window to see Michael and, and all angels. So that's the cover. Uh, we'll be, uh, by the back cover, we'll be in Pentecost 19, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Um, it's still green season, as you can see by the patterns around you in the world outside. Uh, I keep thinking our tomatoes are done and they're not done. You see what I'm saying? Right, so we're not quite in harvest time yet, but we're getting there. You know it's coming. So you can kind of hear it in the way the, the readings are, uh, where we are in, in this year in the gospel according to St. Mark. It's late summer, and that means we're still growing, still producing fruit. And uh, that'll be our focus today. Uh, this is Gouge Your Eye Out Sunday. You hear this one just about every, every year. Uh, once, uh, Jesus says, if your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. And that'll be our meditation for today. Um, any announcements that need to be heard? Um, Fred, oh dear. Oh, I got my new microphone. <laughs> um, just like a t the toy you get on Christmas Day and you want to try it out? Well, here it is. Um, so, if you still can't hear the service, we have personal PAs available. Uh, we got eight of them, so don't be shy. If you need to uh, Get a personal PA, I'll have them available after the service, and you can take them home, bring them back next Sunday, and use them every Sunday thereafter, and uh, we'll have them at the second service as well. So, just want to let you know. Thank you. Very good. Programming note, I'm on for the Bible study between services today, so I'm looking forward to seeing you. We'll do something fun, maybe, I don't know. Anything else? Let's then... Turn ourselves, our inward beings, to the God who does so many good things to us, even when it's unpleasant. We try to do that in a public way so the whole world knows that we have Jesus as our Lord, and we'll do that with a hymn. Please rise.
form for worship is divine service setting four. It's uh, printed in full in your bulletin. Let's remember our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's celebrate the incarnation of Jesus beginning with the intro. It. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your renown, O Lord, throughout all ages. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. 
Everlasting Father, source of every blessing, mercifully direct and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that we may complete the works you have prepared for us to do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is taken from Numbers 11. Now the rabble that was among the children of Israel had a strong craving, and the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their clans, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord blazed hotly, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you dealt ill with your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all, these, all this people? Did I give them birth that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing child to the land that you swore to give to their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they weep before me and say, give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you will treat me like this, kill me at once. If I find favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of meeting, and let them take their stand there with you. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My lord, Moses stopped them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. He will, he will command, command his, his angels concerning, concerning you, you to guard you in all your ways. ways. Bless, bless the Lord, Lord O my, my soul, and, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. The epistle today is taken from James 5. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone brings him back, let him know 
that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Don't stop him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives, gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. The Nicene Creed. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, Please be seated for the hymn of the day.
I walked into a room full of people, and there was in there a man my age, and he pointed at me and he said, you are the man of God. And there, in front of all his brothers and sisters, and there were many of them, and all their husbands and wives, sometimes more than one apiece, given divorce and remarriage, and in front of all their children and grandchildren, he gave me a gift. It was a nice gift. I bought something amber with it. A guy my age, veteran of the first Iraq war, Operation Desert Storm, a kid from New Fane back in 1991, he'd seen some things in his childhood. His father beat his mother in drunken rages. Those experiences he thought prepared him for war, but then at war he saw some things on fire that should not be on fire. When he came home, there was no one to come home to because of all those fists of his father breaking up the whole family, all those brothers and sisters. And since then, he had lived as a man for the last 20 years, as you would expect a man who had seen things on fire that should not have been on fire. He lived as that man, a man with a broken family, no one to come home to. You are the man of God, he said, and he gave me a gift. Twelve years ago, come this November, it made an impression on me. I bought something amber with it. Now, I don't know that this man was a believer. He fits neatly into a type, a warrior type who saw things on fire that should not be on fire. A, a warrior who would rather go to hell on your behalf, not believing that such horrors can exist in the same universe as a living God. He spent a lot of time flirting with the prison system, riding around on his motorcycle with other men who formed relationships and then tore them up and they tore into each other as brothers who had seen things on fire that should not be on fire. But see, I do not believe that he did not believe. What I believe is that he could not bear to be surrounded by people whose hearts were lumps of coal submerged in icy water. You are the man of God, followed by a gift, is the same as and fulfills Christ's word that whoever gives even a cup of water to a pastor in the name of Jesus will surely not lose his reward. This man is a believer. See, yesterday I woke up with a whole other sermon ready for you, loaded up with nursing students and a Corvette stingray that was parked out front and how it is that that's not my covetous eye that gets me thrown into everlasting fire, but it's my covetous heart that gets me thrown into everlasting fire. The nature of us as sinful human beings bound to our sinful nature until Christ shall come and break it for us. But now in these last days, how important it is to live our lives in a repentance for the forgiveness of sins and how that is a great example of the Christian faith in operation, et cetera, et cetera. That sermon was loaded with laugh lines too. I mean, it was great. We would have had a lot of fun with it. And I think given that the Bills are 3-0 and and also given that the Bills aren't playing until late tonight, that I would probably have your attention long enough for you to pay attention to the jokes. I think you would have laughed at the jokes too. And I would have patted myself on the back on a job well done and waited for you to come through with lots of ear candy. But then something in the text caught my eye and I had to throw the whole thing out. Jesus has the 12 apart by themselves. That's what caught my eye. I said, by Jove, this text is to me a pastor. This is not a general Christian thing. As I've been reading it, maybe I should pay closer attention. See, a pastor is in the apostolic office. That's what this thing's all about, which is what we have here with the 12. He's teaching them in particular, which I inherit, standing in their office. No one else in here is in the office of the apostles. So I have to pay special attention to what he's teaching them so that I can take it to heart, seeing as how I'm one of theirs. 
Looking a little closer then, I saw a bad translation. Generally speaking, I don't bother to tell you when there's a bad translation in front of you, but, but today I got to tell you, you do have a bad translation. There's a difference between in the name of Jesus and upon the name of Jesus, and your translation obliterates it. Translation breaks a major theme of the gospel, according to St. Mark, and that theme is being in the realm of Jesus versus being in the realm of Satan utterly obliterates it. Can't see it. Now, you should have some measure of distress thinking something like this, but I thought the Bible was the Word of God and infallible. Well, yes, it is the Word of God, and in fact, it is reliable. You can trust it, but it is a translation, and sometimes translations are bad. And now you should have a different measure of distress. You should perhaps be saying among yourselves, then what shall we do? You shall make sure that your pastors are well-trained. That's what you should do. And you have before you today a rather extraordinary gift standing, I must say. Not only am I well-trained, but I am so well-trained that I am tasked with training other men to become pastors to stand in the apostolic office with me. So last week I told you I'd do special exercises so that I can get down under your children, uh, your smallest children, that I might become least of all, remember? Uh, those squats. What I didn't tell you is that those same exercises make it so that I can get under men half my age, beneath their center of gravity, that I might lift them up and body slam them to the ground and pin their head to the ground and then put my thumb behind their mandible and, and say, now I'm going to drool in your ear until you can tell me the difference between in the name of Jesus and upon the name of Jesus. Right? The seminary experience is actually far more painful than that. It really is. And it's still not enough to train men for the experience of being in the apostolic office because as a pastor, you are surrounded by people who have seen things on fire that should not have been on fire. This is Jesus to his 12 in a room together, right? drawing a picture of how serious this endeavor is. Of them, he asked, what were you discussing on the road? That's how this whole conversation began. It was a couple Sundays ago. What were you talking about on the road? The question itself is all loaded up with seriousness. It could be that they were standing out here on Whitfield Avenue arguing with each other about greatness, but Jesus is already redirecting them where that road leads. You know, the road goes to my crucifixion. The 12 want to talk about greatness. Jesus wants to talk about his kingdom and how it comes. It comes with fire. And we're not talking about a lovely campfire on a uh, cool, dry autumn evening. We're talking about whatever it is that's waiting for the unrepentant. I mean, you don't need to be told about that fire. You know what it is. You've already seen it. Seen it. You've felt it. We all have to one extent or another. Salted with fire. For the believer, it's only a little fire, a participation with Jesus in his crucifixion. But also for the believer, we cope with it in different ways. Some of us learn from it, trust God from it, make do with its destruction, maybe even get enlivened by it. Others of us turn our hearts to coal and douse them in ice water because it is just too painful. For some of us, it is far more painful to live in a participation with Christ than it is to just die. The fact is, pastors lead their congregations, whether the pastors want to or not, or whether the congregations want to or not. The pattern has become that congregations would rather go to the grave instead of going to the crucifixion. 
The crucifixion is where you had to go to get salted with fire. And who wants that? The fire at the crucifixion, however, is a repentance for the forgiveness of sins, which is far different from seeing things on fire that should not be on fire, in which we all participate also being by nature sinful. That fire is wrath, and it drives us to strive against one another, being at odds against one another, hating one another, making enemies. The fire at the cross sets us at peace with one another. Jesus is speaking to his 12, but he says, everyone, everyone, he says, so this includes you. Everyone will be salted with fire. Have that salt of fire within you. Do not turn it into a lump of coal to douse it in ice water. When we get to a crossroads together as a pastor and a congregation, your pastor leading you away from the grave to the crucifixion and you not wanting to follow, remember this. Everyone will be salted with fire. Have salt in yourselves and be at peace among one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please rise for prayer. Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of your dear Son and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us that with good and honest hearts we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith. We humbly implore you to rule and govern your church throughout the world. Bless all those who proclaim your truth that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word and that faith in you may be strengthened, love toward others increased, and your kingdom extended. Send forth laborers into your harvest and sustain those whom you have sent, that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people and the gospel preached in all the world. Grant health and prosperity to all who are in authority, especially to the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of New York, and to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant them grace to rule according to your good pleasure for the maintenance of righteousness and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. According to your good pleasure, turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries that they may cease their hostilities and walk with us in meekness and in peace. Comfort, O God, with your Holy Spirit, all who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity. We ask especially that you watch over Gladys, Shirley, Ernie, Karen, Stephen, Jane and family, Don, James, and Lily. Now those we hear from the pews. Grant courage and steadfastness, especially to those who suffer for your namesake, that they may receive and accept their afflictions in the confidence that you will acknowledge them as your own. Although we have deserved your righteous wrath and punishment, yet we ask you, O most merciful Father, remember not the sins of our youth nor our many transgressions. Out of your unspeakable goodness and mercy, defend us from all harm and danger to body and soul. 
Preserve us from false doctrine, from war and bloodshed, from plague and pestilence, from all calamity by fire and water, from hail and tempest, from failure of harvest and from famine, from anguish of heart and despair of your mercy, and from an evil death. In every time of trouble, show yourself a very present help, the Savior of all, especially to those who believe. Cause all needed fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season. Give success to the Christian training of the young, to all lawful occupations on land, sea, and in the air, and to all pure arts and useful knowledge, crowning them with your blessing. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls and all our talents, together with the offerings we bring you. For by his blood your Son has purchased us to be your own, that we may live under him in his kingdom. These and whatsoever other things you'd have us ask of you, O God, Grant us, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We now receive the offering. The service of the sacrament begins on page 7. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving in him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying.
Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you've prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. This body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.